A detailed drawing provides all of the necessary information so that the part represented on the print can be manufactured. All of the required orthographic views, pictorial views, section views, and auxiliary views are provided on this drawing. All dimensions and feature locations along with tolerances are given as well. An assembly drawing provides the information on various parts of a machine or structure that come together or assemble. The individual parts are drawn in their respective locations showing how they will fit together when assembled. An assembly drawing has other uses. It represents the working relationships of the mating parts of a machine or structure and the function of each. It gives a general idea of how the finished product should look. It aids in securing overall dimensions and center distances in assembly. It gives the detailer data needed to design the smaller units of a larger assembly. And it also supplies illustrations that may be used for catalogs, maintenance manuals, or other purposes. Because the assembly drawing consists of many parts, or at least more than one, the principles of orthographic projection may be violated. The intention of this print is not to supply all of the information needed to manufacture, but rather to provide direction for assembly of finished parts. These drawings should not be overly complicated either. They should not be overly detailed, as the information for manufacture will be given in detail on the detail drawing. Although many of the detailed dimensions can be eliminated from the assembly drawing, dimensions that describe the relationship of the parts and enhance the understanding of their fit in assembly are left on the print. If the assembly drawing requires that all features of the parts be dimensioned, then this print is no longer referred to as an assembly drawing, but rather a working assembly drawing. When a machine or other mechanism is respectively more complex, then a sub-assembly drawing is usually made. A sub-assembly drawing is often made of smaller mechanical units of the whole. Uh, for instance, if a lathe had to be manufactured, an assembly drawing would be very complex and hard to make sense of. Instead, sub-assembly drawings of the major components of the lathe would be made instead. An assembly drawing of the carriage, the headstock, the bed, the tailstock, may be created instead of just a single assembly drawing of the whole machine. From the assembly drawing, the detail drawings are made, and each part is given a part number. This part number will be located on the detail drawing in the title block, and it will also be identified in the title block on the assembly drawing. Item numbers that correspond to the part numbers will be placed on the assembly drawing with leader lines. The part number is often enclosed inside of a small circle referred to as a balloon. The main purpose of putting this part number in a balloon is so that it is not mistaken for a dimension. The bill of materials is a list of all of the components shown on the assembly drawing. Often, the bill of materials is placed on a separate sheet of paper for the purposes of handling and duplicating. Standard parts which can be purchased rather than fabricated, like bolts and nuts, should have a part number and appear on the bill of material. There should be enough information in the description column to allow the purchasing agent to order all of the parts needed.